share my screen real quick here and uh, walk you through some of the first things you should know for kind of getting in touch with everybody. Okay. Um, first one is on our website. So if you go to the bottom of any page on openworm.org, you'll find this contacts uh, page here. And uh, this is, this is uh, viewed here. What I recommend everybody do right now, if you're really interested in getting involved in the project, is that you go to the high volume mailing list and you sign up for it. Okay, so it looks like this. It's a Google group. It's called Open Worm Discuss. Um, I've I've joined it under my other account, but um, this is kind of our archive of uh, the work. One of one of the two main archives, I'd say, of, of all the work that uh, we do in the project. Okay, so uh, if you're not signed up to this list yet, I would suggest you do that. And then um, you can actually learn a lot by reading through this archive uh, that's on the web to start getting a sense of what you know what folks have been doing. Okay. Um, this is kind of the unorganized version of that, um, but at least um, you know I would suggest you know searching for things if you're having troubles like installing certain code bases and whatnot. Okay, so open worm discuss. There's also a lower volume mailing list, but we tend to recommend this for folks that maybe aren't as interested in um, you know uh, contributing, but more just just kind of being in touch. But you're also welcome to sign up for that. Okay, so that's open worm discuss. And so um, Vahid, when you're when you were saying specifically you have a proposal that you'd like to share, um, I'd say sign up for the list and share it with the list. Okay, send it to openworm-discuss at um, so that everybody can see it. Okay? And then I think you'll have lots of folks that are uh, give you feedback on it. Um, there's about, I think, between 70 and 90 folks that have signed up for that list. So, um, and that includes folks on more on the biology side and more on the computer side. So, um, so send that there. I think that would be that would be a great contribution. Folks would be happy to happy to see whatever proposal you have. It sounds like you've got a lot of exciting work going on. Um, the other channels uh, I recommend we do have a blog um, that you can follow on Tumblr. You can just click on that from here. Um, we also push out a lot of public um, updates on Twitter. So if you're not on Twitter, um, you might sign up and, and follow us there. And then of course Google Plus. Um, the Google Plus page um, is useful for us when we schedule meetings and that kind of thing. Um, so this info at Open Worm is really just for a couple folks that you know basically you know sign this stuff up and you all you know, send notes through here. But really for talking to the group as a whole, um, which we recommend doing really all the time, I'd say sign up for the high volume meetings. And so um, so an open source project generally works through mailing lists. And that's the way that we recommend folks to work. Okay. Um, so then the other major um, place where we organize and that I recommend that you get on as quickly as possible is GitHub. So um, if you don't have a GitHub account, I suggest you get one. Um, on GitHub, we organize a couple of things. We organize our milestones, which are our high-level goals for the project, and that's linked here. Um, you can find that. Um, you can find the milestones, uh, roadmap, and change log. Uh, you can find a lot of these things here at the bottom. I think, uh, let's see, we got, yeah, we got projects. Um, so this is under the Open Worm repository under GitHub. And, um, and these milestones are organized so that there's a bunch of issues underneath them. So like, let's take this one. So we're building a test suite for the simulation from the Worm Behavior Database. You click on this, you're going to get a specific list of issues, these four issues, um, which are grouped together. Um, and uh, and then each of these issues you can click into, and uh, it gives you it should if it's well documented it should give you like this one is give you a description of what's going on, point you to other uh, content that uh, you know that that may be in some other spot, and uh, and then there's a rolling uh, commentary on on that. Um, now when you use GitHub, um, one of the things that's nice is that you can watch a whole repository. So this open world repository, for example, is being watched by 44 people. Okay, so these are all folks that are checking in on this, and this is kind of a second way that folks keep track of, of the project by um, watching the open worm um, uh, repository. So I'd suggest, in addition to signing up, I'd suggest that you watch this this particular repo because um, you'll see emails that come through as folks are op uh, opening and closing out uh, the issues. And you can get to the full issue list as well uh, here, and you can see kind of all the activity that's happening. So I'd recommend you know um, brushing up on how issues work on GitHub. 
because it's the main way that we organize ourselves and it's where kind of all of the content goes. Okay? Um, an, an, another place that we post stuff, and uh, this might be interesting as well for the numerical simulation guys, is on YouTube. So we have this YouTube channel, um, and I suggest you subscribe. Now, um, so here are some examples I want to show for the numerical simulation guys. Um, so there's so the guys that are doing the most with the numerical simulation uh, research and development are the guys in Novosibirsk. Um, and this is a demo example of some of the code base that they're working on. And here, um, so one of the things of the project is that we've implemented uh, the smooth particle hydrodynamics uh, with uh, both liquid and elastic matter um, into the, in, in, in the project. And um, we've been doing a series of physics tests on the algorithm to see how they work. And this one shows off um, looking at um, uh, you know, a cube of liquid with, uh, in this case, uh, sort of low viscosity. And then there's another video here uh, with uh, much higher viscosity. Okay. So I'll show this. Yeah. And uh, so this one kind of doesn't go very far. It just kind of goes flat like that. And uh, so why are we doing this? Um, well, the reason we're doing it is, let me show you this, uh, this video here. Um, yeah. So this is the worm body, the digital worm body that we're building right now. Okay, And it's broken up into um, a membrane that's impermeable to liquid. Uh, the green part are muscles. Well, they're not uh, fully yet muscle cells, but they're strips of a sort of uh, like like one big long muscle um, on all four quadrants around the worm, and uh, it's also filled up with uh, fluid inside to simulate the um, the hydrostatic pressure that uh, the worm body experiences, and and it's actually evolved even more since this uh, since this video. But this is where a lot of our numerical simulation stuff is going. Um, now if you want to get a hold of the code and the principal way that folks work with the project is that they go and they download a, a, a clone one of these repositories. And uh, the place for that is this new particle hydrodynamics re repository. This is all under the OpenWorm GitHub organization. So um, if you guys are into the numerical simulation stuff, I recommend checking out the project um, and, uh, and going ahead and cloning it and uh, trying to build it. That's usually the first step is to um, is to build uh, the, the repo. And this one in particular has a bunch of different branches. So some of those tests uh, that you see are actually different branches that are integrated under here. So, um, so that's a good source of information. Okay. Finally, there's uh, this wiki, which um, I also recommend everybody go through. Um, it's under openworm slash openworm slash wiki. And uh, under here, there's an introduction to the concept of the project. There's some uh, concept uh, discussions, and then there's a project overview. Um, let me say a little bit about the project overview. Um, okay, so one of the first things that we're doing with uh, the, you know with this uh, virtual organism project is that we're doing neuromechanical model, which means that we're combining the activity of neurons with the activity of muscles. Okay, so an early prototype of the C. elegans worm. It was built by the group in Novosibirsk, looked like this, with uh, the head of the worm over here and the tail over here. It had muscles that were sort of pulling against the frame of the body. And uh, inside, there were sort of these pseudoneurons. That, so this is from looking inside of the project. These sort of pseudoneurons caused uh, the muscles to light up and, uh, and to pull on the frame. And so this was actually a, a physical physics-based simulation that, that did all this. And so now, um, this was sort of past work, and we published a paper on it. And uh, now we're looking at having a much more detailed uh, version of the neurons and the muscles. And so that's represented by these two pictures, okay, and doing it fully in three dimensions. And so really, um, we can do that by implementing two algorithms, one that simulates the neurons and another that simulates the mechanics of the body and the world, and combine them together. So a lot of our effort has been is making that body that I was just showing you have muscles that can both be activated by neurons and then have those muscles also affect the environment. We keep making progress towards that. Now, for folks, for Vahidi who's interested in uh, systems biology, um, 
I would I would emphasize that you know although we are very focused on this neuromechanical model, uh, it's not the only thing that uh, you know the project would like to do down the road um, because there are a bunch of other cells that are involved in this process. And uh, if you haven't seen the um, the Worm browser at browser.openworm.org, I, I definitely suggest checking it out. Um, because here you'll be able to actually see all the cells of the worm um, and uh, many of the ones that uh, will probably undergo changes during aging. So, um, and, and anyway, I think this is probably the most easily accessible um, anatomical framework for the C. elegans. It takes a little bit, minute to load and also my bandwidth is, uh, is kind of uh, slow. So um, we'll come back to that. Okay. Um, but uh, what did I want to finish here? Right. So we focused a lot on working on a single cell and, um, and then scaling out from that. And so a lot of our other work is dealing with the data uh, for all the parameters that are needed to describe given cells or given, um, given neurons or, or uh, in case of the physics or numerical simulations, you know, the mass and, and other physics type properties. Um, this picture here it tries to represent the different aspects of the project where basically we do data collection and representation based around different kinds of ways of describing biological knowledge. Um, we're doing work to integrate uh, the contents of uh, muscle cells together, and so there's some optimization involved in that. There's the mechanical and physics part, and then we're consolidating a lot of our code around a platform called Geppetto, um, meaning that uh, we're basically taking the um, research work that's going on in the code base that just does the simulation of, um, of the physics, and we're putting that into a framework that can be viewed on the web. We want everybody um, in the world, basically, to be able to play with this simulation while it's ready, and that means that we need to have sort of a WebGL-based environment, like, like this one. So right now, this is not showing a simulation, but it is showing a um, static, you know, the elegant body. Um, it's pretty boring until you start sliding this lever down, and you start to be able to see the different uh, cells that are inside of it. So if I zoom up on, um, on this, I can see the different neurons, and uh, I can switch over into this mode as well and uh, show some of the other cells that are involved in um, sort of uh, grinding up food up here and digestion in terms of the intestines and reproduction, uh, laying eggs and, and whatnot. So, um, and if I click on each one of these, I can get uh, a name, and this name of a cell, then you can go and look up more information about and uh, find out more about it. So we, what we want to do is we want to have an, um, a system like this that brings, the, uh, that brings the worm to life and have it moving and crawling, um, and so that's really what we're endeavoring to do in the, in the long term, uh, to have a cell-by-cell -cell description of, of the CL. Um, 